everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and we are finally going to be reviewing the all-new Land Rover Defender 130. Before we get into this video, though, a huge shout-out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh, Utah, for giving me some time with this Defender 130. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. If you guys don't know already, the Land Rover here in Lehigh does not charge any sort of markups over MSRP whatsoever on the new Land Rover product or the new Jaguar product as well. So if you want a great deal on either product, then definitely reach out to them. Ask for Jordan, and he can let you know if you're within their sales region so then you can obviously get that MSRP deal. And then on a side note, as always, if you want to save time money the next time I purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 3-liter inline 6 that goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy 17 around town and then 21 on the highway, with power outputs being 395 horsepower and then 406 pound-feet of torque. And sadly, you cannot get the V8 powertrain with the 130. Before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. And by the way, this Defender literally just got off the transport truck pretty much, so it hasn't been cleaned yet, and some of the transport stuff is still on the Defender, so just take that into account with this review. Starting with the hood, you guys can see we've got the 130 decal there in the center, and then it still has the normal like Defender accents here, and then also the Defender logo there on the front portion. Coming down below, you guys can see here with the daytime running lights and with the LED headlamps and then also with our Land Rover logo. We've got parking sensors here at the bottom with our itty bitty camera, our X Dynamic badge because that's the package just has and then also the fog light. And then when you put it all together, it still has that cool off-roader appearance that every Defender has with the front end. Coming around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 60, 20 in the front and over in the rear as well. And I love the design on these wheels. First off, they have a satin finish with the color and it actually contrasts very nicely to the silver brake caliper. But yeah, the five spoke design, it just works with the 130. Now being an X Dynamic, you guys can see we do have all terrain tires and we also have air suspension. Now the fender flares are pretty flush with this particular one and then you guys can see Defender logo there on the side. This is where you can tell that it is a 130 because man does it have some junk in its trunk. This is officially the Kim Kardashian Defender. I had to make the joke, okay people? Notice you do have the storage there on the side which is pretty cool if you do, you know, off-road adventures. And seeing this in person, it actually looks a lot better than in the pictures. It kind of looked like overextended in the pictures with the back end, but it yeah, it looks good. I mean, you guys can see the regular 110 driving by like it's bigger than the 110 for sure but it's it's not as crazy as i thought it would be now here is the key fob it's the regular land rover key fob we have the unlock function the lock function this is turning the lights and then this is just to unlock the rear hatch speaking of opening the rear hatch just like every defender the whole window and hatch opens by itself and i guess i shouldn't say hatch is more of like a tailgate because it swings to the side but you guys get the point now this is actually over a foot longer compared to the 110 and so with the third row up you actually have some storage space behind the third row which is awesome you also have these buttons right here that'll raise or lower the rear end just to give you a little bit of an easier access to the back now I understand this is not the best visual because the seats aren't like all the way down, but hopefully you guys get the point. If you have the third row folded down, you have quite a bit more storage space here in the back compared to what you would have with the 110, which is quite impressive. And then when you're all done, you just close this like a regular Defender tailgate. This still utilizes the same new Defender taillights, which just looks so cool, especially the turn signal indicator. And then of course we have our P400 badge to signify this has the inline six. And then you guys can see here with the recovery hooks on either side and the receiver hitch there at the bottom and parking sensors. And this one also has the spare tire carrier, which I think just looks so much cooler than having the wheel like exposed on the back end. And then when you put it all together, like I said, this actually looks pretty good in person. I'm surprised. Now, before we go over the interior, I do want to show you guys, we have this gigantic rack here at the top so that you could, you know, put a tent up here, you know, whatever you want for adventure stuff, which is cool. Now, here's the door panel in the rear. You guys can see the padding here on the side, just like every other Defender still have the exposed rivets, which is really cool. Speakers for the sound system as well. Again, all of it has that utilitarian appearance. And then popping inside, it looks like this one has the resist seats. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section below. Um, but anyways, you guys can see here on 
the side and then obviously perforated down the center and yeah i love how they look now with the second row passengers you've got little storage nets here on the backs of the seats you do have vents down below and you got your own climate zone here for the rear passengers on top of that now legroom here in the second row is really good headroom is also really good now to access the third row all you have to do is just pull this latch right there and then the seat actually goes on some rollers it's easier to do with two hands but you can do it with one hand and then you just push that forward now back here in the third row, it's actually livable for human beings. In the Defender 110 with the third row, you can't really fit adults back there, but here, legroom works. And headroom definitely works. Some other touches here in the back is we actually get vents here for the rear passengers, and we have the same leather trim here on these sides, so you're not just resting your arm on hard touch plastic. And if that wasn't enough, we actually get our own sunroof, but it looks like we don't have the Alpine lights anymore and also our windows getting blocked by the storage bin now the front door panel is identical to the rear with material use and design like everything's the same meridian sound system by the way if you guys are wondering all of our window controls right here we do have memory seats and then you've got the adjustments there for the mirrors and then the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring now a lot of you might not care about this but i do so payload capacity is 1320 pounds so that means that if you load all of the seats up because this is an eight passenger vehicle then you're probably going to be at like the max payload so you wouldn't be able to really take too much uh, with you anyways gross vehicle weight rating is 7450 making this just over 6,000 pounds in total weight the front seats have the same design as the other seats throughout the 130 definitely love the overall look and then you do have your power adjustments there on the side we've got rubber floor mats which is super practical for an off-roader like this and then our x dynamic badge right there and then we actually have our defender grab handle up above and the running parking brake down below and look at that nice padding We've got the normal Defender steering wheel here with nice leather trim all around. You've got the stitching on the center, which is dark to match everything. And then you got stuff like your heated steering wheel control, cruise control here on the steering wheel, controls for the center stack, voice command controls. And notice when I press this button, it actually changes the face because it changes what shows in the center gauge cluster. Turn signal light stock, windshield wiper stock. Now this 130 has the full digital gauge cluster, as you can see, which I'm a huge fan of because I think it just looks cool, especially compared to the analog gauge cluster. I, just, I understand the analog's a little bit more simplistic, but anyways, you can basically just scroll through different menus to see basic vehicle information, you know, the normal stuff you'd see in a gauge cluster. Now here's a camera system for the 130. You guys can see you've got trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and resolution is actually really solid. You got the bird's eye view and look at this. We can even change to like an off-road mode, which is cool. Center locker, you can see if that's locked or unlocked. And then you got a towing mode too. And this also does the cool feature where as you will like pull forward or backwards while you're using the camera system, it'll show you underneath the Defender as well, which yeah, it's just a nice feature. I also wanted to show you another part of the camera system and that is this like outside view which is pretty cool. And then you just have like the normal 360 view where you can see out of pretty much every single angle. As for the rest of the infotainment system, it looks like this is the larger infotainment system you can get with the Defender. Uh, response time's great. You have a shortcut bar here on the side and it shows you cool stuff like elevation, which, wow, we're pretty high up there right now, which is uh, cool. But also again, you guys can see with like the off-road status. I don't know why I like that so much, but I do. The next thing we can see on the infotainment screen is gonna be the drive modes. So first off, you've got the eco mode, you've got a comfort, you have grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, you've got a sand, you've got a rock crawl, and then you have a wading mode. And the drive modes will adjust uh, the air suspension accordingly, and so it still has all the same off-road drive modes. We've got the shifter for the eight-speed automatic transmission. Uh, pretty easy to use, and it does have a manual function. And look at that, just boom, right into park. We have a ton of controls in this section, so volume control on the one side. You guys can see some climate control stuff there at the top. Auto stop, start to turn that off. Hill descent control, that's for the air suspension to raise or lower it. Your stability control, low range. And so right now it's controlling temperature, but if I push it in, then I can do the heated or cooled seat function. If I push it in again, press the wrong control there, <laughs> then it goes back to temperature, and then push that for fan speed, and then you push that for drive mode, and the drive mode stuff will pop up on the screen. We've got a few USBs and a 12 volt just down below that control stack. And then we have tons of storage space. And this kind of gives you a reference point for everything. I do love the trim here. And again, the overall design is pretty cool. Now we have really nice material use here on the center console, which massive amounts of storage space. And there's a wireless phone charging pad right in front of it. We've got more of that nice leather trim that goes all the way across Defender logo down below. And again, I love how this is a grab handle, but it's covered in leather. And then you can use that as some storage space just up above the glove box. And speaking of glove boxes, there's your glove box. Now up top, we do have our controls for 
the full panoramic center. Obviously that kind of gets in the way a little bit, but still it lets a lot of light into the cabin. Now here's a window sticker for this 130. And again, this is an X Dynamic SE if you guys are wondering with the equipment. Now you can see that a lot of stuff is actually standard equipment with that package. Base MSRP on this one is $81,400. And this is actually pretty lightly optioned for a Defender X Dynamic. And so after all options, total MSRP on this one is $87,685, which for a three row luxury SUV is pretty reasonable. Now to sum things up with our video here on this Defender 130, I'm actually really impressed with the new 130 package. I was a little bit skeptical when I first saw it released because again, the photos just didn't make it look all that good. But seeing this in person, the proportions aren't as beautiful as the Defender 110, I will say that, but it actually looks good, especially with this X-Dynamic package and the off-road tires added to it. And when it comes to practicality, this is a lot more practical compared to any other Defender, at least in terms of cargo volume, right, and passenger ability. And so, yeah, if you love the Defender and you want third row capability, this is going to be the one to go for because the third row in this is actually usable, whereas in the Defender 110, yeah, you could get it with a third row, but it wasn't necessarily a usable third row. And, you know, I could, you know, make some complaints about how this is not going to be as practical off-road because, you know, departure angle is going to be worse and breakover angle is going to be worse and all that stuff. But here's the deal. Nobody really takes these off-road anyways. I mean, there's a few people that do, but for the most part, this is just another one of those mall crawling vehicles, which is completely fine. And so if you want a really cool looking three-row mall crawler, I mean, this thing, like, it checks all the boxes and I can't think of really anything else that... I would, if I was looking for like a luxury three row SUV that had cool looks like this and everything, there's nothing else in the market that's like it. There really isn't. Like, I know some people will probably bring up like Mercedes GLS and all that kind of stuff, but like, that just, it's not a Defender. That's all I'm going to say. It doesn't, it doesn't look this cool. So let me know what you guys think about the new 130. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Land Rover here in Lehigh for giving me some time with this 130. Check out the intro in the description down below. Ask for Jordan if you have any questions. I'll see ya.